Meaningless, meaningless, all is meaningless. The words of Ecclesiastes jumped out of the page at me as I began to prepare for this week's sermon. The writer, who by tradition is King Solomon, here speaks of the meaninglessness of working hard all your life, only to have to leave everything to your heirs who may be fools. They link very clearly with Jesus' words on our Gospel reading. You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? These seem very appropriate verses for me and for the chasers, as we have moved into a, such a beautiful house. Of course, it is only rented, but the same message applies. Don't put your trust, don't rest your happiness on things. They will let you down. Probably the most unhappy time of my life was la the last year I spent in Spain. I had a beautiful house with a swimming pool and views over the mountains, but I had no close friends living near me. There were people I could speak to on the end of the telephone, but in Spain I was mostly alone. I had some colleagues I got on well with, but that isn't the same. It was not that God was absent, but I seemed to have taken a wrong turn, and he was distant. It was with relief that I returned to Egypt, and although my time there was not all plain sailing, it was exciting, and it was with God. I think this message is one of the most central messages of the Gospel, yet I'm not sure we hear that much about it in church. It runs 100% opposite to our advertising-dominated culture. Some seem to teach that the church demands holiness and the world offers an alternative of sexual excess and drunkenness. There can be a little truth to this in some circumstances, but the big temptation offered by the world is not sex, 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 but buy, buy, buy. You will be happy if you have that new phone, computer, TV, car. Your life will be fulfilled if you have that house. Most people spend their whole lives working to buy and then look after their things. The prophet Isaiah denounces those who add house to house and join field to field till no space is left and you live alone in the land. That's in Isaiah 5. Verse 8. That's what I felt like in Spain. I lived alone in the land and was miserable. I realized I could spend the rest of my life cleaning my swimming pool and cutting my lawn and pruning my orange trees. It was beautiful, but it was a trap. Solomon understood this and saw everything as meaningless. Jesus understood this too, but he offers hope. Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. But then he continues, So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. Life is not meaningless. It doesn't just consist of acquiring possessions, which we cannot take with us. There is more, and so St. Paul takes up the theme in Colossians. So, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. He ends with that cry of unity. There is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, Barbarian, Scythian, slave and free. But Christ is all and in all. He calls us to turn from all sorts of negative living and to tell the truth to one another. As we receive communion tonight, we signal that we receive Jesus in our lives. We acknowledge that we live on him. He is our spiritual food. And we, single, that we signal that we are a family united in him. As a family, we need to have our own family values, that is, kingdom values. Not the values of this world, which urges us to consume more and more, and keep as much as we can for ourselves. 
It is foolishness, as Solomon said. It is ultimately meaningless. Instead, Jesus calls us to store up treasure in heaven. But this isn't a case of gratification deferred. If we seek to go God's way now, eternal life starts at this moment. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen.